Alright, today's video is going to be a review for our second quiz this chapter. And we're going to start off by finding all of our solutions. Now there's lots of different ways that you can go about this, but there's some first instincts that you should go towards. So when we look at number one, we've got x to the fourth plus x to the third minus x minus one equals zero. We know that the first step and the easiest step to find our solution, we should always check to see if it's possible to factor. So when we look at this, if I'm going to factor, I've got four pieces. The only method of factoring that could work would be factor by grouping. We pull out the GCF of x cubed and we are left with x plus one. We pull out a negative one, we're left with x plus one is equal to zero. Because we have that same piece on the inside, we know that factor by grouping is going to work. We take the GCFs together, we've got x cubed minus one as the first factor, and x plus one as the second factor equals zero. Now we've got to double check to see if we can factor any further, because we're not done factoring x plus one is as far as we can go, but when we look at x cubed minus one, I see that I've got the difference of cubes here. If I've got the difference of cubes, just remember the pattern, minus plus minus. Oops, minus plus plus, sorry. So we have our a minus our b, and we're trying to think out what piece cubed gives us x cubed. Well, that's pretty easy, it's just x and what number cubed gives us one. Again, that, this was an easy one, it's just one cubed. So that's a minus b. Your a squared plus a times b plus b squared. So we've got x minus one times x squared plus x plus one, and don't forget to pull down that factor of x plus one. Now we are factored as far as we can go. That x squared plus one or that x squared plus x plus one can't factor any further. So when we are solving, we set x minus one equal to zero. We've got x is equal to one, that's one solution. We've got x plus one equals zero. We've got a solution at x equals negative one. The more difficult one is gonna be that middle piece, x squared plus x plus one. Since we can't factor, your options are either using the quadratic formula or completing the square. And we know that I normally go towards the quadratic formula, I just think it's easier. Opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. So we've got a negative one plus or minus, one minus four is a negative three all over two. We have a negative on the inside, we've got to pull that out as an i, three can't be broken down. So we know we had a fourth degree polynomial, so we're gonna have four solutions. And how we break those solutions down is we have two real, that's the positive one and the negative one, and then we have two imaginary. And those two imaginary comes from the quadratic formula since we have plus i root three and minus i root three. All right, so we found our solutions for one. Let's go ahead and find our solutions for two. And number two, we only have three pieces, but it's not a quadratic because we have a fourth degree polynomial. So what we are gonna follow is our quadratic form. So we're gonna treat it similar to a quadratic, even though it's a quartic graph. So we're looking for numbers that multiply the outside, add to the middle. Oh, but we don't have an a value of one, which means we've gotta do Batman with our fourth degree polynomial. So four times a negative nine is a negative 36. We bring down our first term, bring down our last term. So we want two numbers that multiply to a negative 36, x to the fourth, and adds to a negative five. Those numbers are a positive four and a negative nine. Now normally these are just x's, but because we start with the x to the fourth, these are going to be x squared terms. So we've got to change it slightly than our original Batman. So 4x squared, negative 9x squared. Then we do it the same way, factor by grouping. We pull out our 4x squared. We're left with x squared plus 1. Pull out our negative 9. We're left with x squared plus 1. And again, our middle terms are the same, so we're good there. 
Our first factor, we combine the two GCFs together to get 4x squared minus 9. Bring our second factor down. And remember that's set equal to 0 because we're solving. And if we're solving, we know we always have an equal 0 sign. We look at our first piece and we ask ourselves, can we factor any further? 4x squared minus 9. And we can. That is the difference of two squares. So we know it's going to break down into two pieces. One's a plus, one's a minus. The square root of 4x squared is 2x, so it's the first piece. Square root of 9 is 3. That's our second piece. x squared minus, plus 1. It's a quadratic. It's not the sum of cubes because it's not a cubed. But it's not the difference of two squares either because we've got addition. If that was a subtraction, then we could have broken it down any further, but we can't. So that is going to be our completely factored form. We set each piece equal to 0. Move the 3 over to get 2x equals a negative 3. Divide by 2, and we've got x is equal to a negative 3 halves. Set our second piece equal to 0. Move your 3 over where it's positive. Divide, and we've got x is equal to a positive 3 halves. And last, x squared plus 1 equals 0. We move the 1 over where it becomes negative. We square root, and we've got x is equal to plus or minus i. We know that i is representing the square root of 1, so that's plus or minus i. So we've got two real solutions and two imaginary solutions again. Again, we had a fourth degree, so we should have expected to find four solutions. All right, turn your page over. Number three on the back, we've got x cubed minus 6x squared plus 21x minus 26. We've got four pieces, which means our first instinct should be to factor by grouping. We pull out that GCF, we're left with x minus 6. And our second piece, mm, our only GCF is a 1. So as soon as we see that we don't have the same piece on the inside, we know that grouping is not going to work. If grouping does not work, then we need to do synthetic division. Grouping should be your first instinct. So I what I want you to do right now is go ahead and press pause, enter this equation into your calculator, and find a solution. Remember, a solution, a real solution on your graph is an x-intercept. So I want you to find your x-intercept. Once you've got your x-intercept, I want you to come back and use synthetic division to factor it out. All right, so when you looked at your calculator, you should have seen an x-intercept at 2, which means you have 2 as a solution. So I'm going to use synthetic division, factoring that out, and I'm left with 1, negative 4, 13. We start with a cubed, so we now have an x squared. When I try to factor that, it's not factorable. So I have factored as far as I can, which means I'm going to go ahead and write my equation in factored form. We have a solution at 2, which means that we've got to factor at x minus 2 and we could not factor our quadrat qu quadratic any further, so it's just x squared minus 4x plus 13. Now our last step is to go ahead and solve. We set it equal to 0, and we set each piece equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0 gives us a solution at 2, and then we set x squared minus 4x plus 13 equal to 0, and we've got quadratic formula, opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. When we look inside of that quadratic formula, negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 13 leaves us with a negative 36 on the inside all over 2. Well, we have a negative on the inside, which means I know I'm going to have an i on the outside, but 36 is a perfect square. So square root of 36 is 6, so we've got 6i on the outside. 4, 6, and 2 are all divisible by 2. That becomes 2 plus or minus 3i. So we have a third degree polynomial, which means we've got three solutions. In this case, we have one real, and we have two imaginary. Alright, so those are all of our practice problems. The last thing we're going to do is just kind of run through and do a quick factoring guide. 
So if you come to a problem and you're trying to factor and you only have two terms, there's two pieces, first thing you're going to check for is can you do the difference of two squares? And if you just think about the name, if it's difference, you need a subtraction of two squares. You need two perfect squares. So if you have the difference of two squares, then you can factor it. Or you're going to use the sum of cubes. Again, we have two terms. You need addition and you need two pieces that are perfect cubes. And your last option if you have two pieces is the difference of cubes. If you are given something that has three pieces and you're trying to factor it, if it's a quadratic, you can do regular factoring. If A equals 1, you can do Batman factoring. If A does not equal 1. Now, very similar to that is the quadratic form. And that's, you're going to treat it just like it was a regular quadratic, but you're going to have x to the fourth bx squared and then c. So normally a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. Quadratic form you're going to treat the same way if this is a x to the fourth and that's an x squared. If you are solving and you can't solve by factoring, don't forget that you can use the quadratic formula or you can use completing the square. So sometimes we factor as far as we can and we're not into a point where we can solve. If that happens, we've got quadratic formula or completing the square. And last, if you are trying to factor and or solve and you are given four terms, the first option you want to try is to factor by grouping. If that doesn't work, then you need to use synthetic division. Alright, make sure that you study for your quiz tomorrow.